Welcome back to Vampire. We've gotten all the medicine that they need at Pembroke Hospital from the morgue. Time to give it to Dorothy Crane. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Diseases. Diseases decrease the blood quality of a citizen. Use the correct medicine to heal them. Speak to the patient in the room behind Dorothy to check his medical status. <laughs> I like how that tutorial prompt is kind of... It seems to be sort of pushing you towards... It, it seems to be implying that you should care about healing patients so that their blood quality goes up so that you can get more XP from feeding on them. <laughs> I am a doctor. Surely there's some altruism in Jonathan. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Do a medical checkup with E. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. If, oh, right, that's what the medicine was for, I guess. What was the... The medicine was for a very specific problem. What was it exactly? Ah, oh, fatigue. Yeah, their blood quality right now is really terrible. Not that I intend to feed on them, of course. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Worth a little bit more. Recovering. I guess maybe after a day or two passes, maybe they'll be even be worth even more XP. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I love that Jonathan is just, after being told that they don't want to talk, just keeps talking anyway. Keeps asking questions that require vocal answers. Well, uh, let's just leave them. I'll come back later, after they've recovered. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Waste your time with me. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. I, I just did. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Okay. Well, you seem like a prick. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Hmm. Okay, it depends what they did with the money. If they took it for themselves, then... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's probably kind of shitty. 
If they took it for the hospital, then, I mean, pff, that's fine. Forcing someone who's obviously rich to pay for a place that desperately, need, I'm sure, needs the money to buy supplies for all the emergency cases they have to deal with. But I'll definitely have to talk with him. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. What are you doing in your life? What are these questions? This is this is a strange conversation. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. You don't say. Okay. Well, the um the fatigue potion that I just made costs two hundred thousand shillings. You can pay that at the front desk. What can you tell me about- Not much. I guess I'll say, what are you doing in your life? May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, sir. All right, let's go find that person. I believe this is Pippa Hawkins. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, doctor. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. What are these responses? Get a grip. I, I say to the person who's in the middle of an epidemic in a hospital that's short-staffed and running out of resources and overflowing with patients, how is everything? Not good. Get a grip. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? Well, given the vampires, I have good reason to believe it's worse. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You're right. When dealing with such a terrible disease, one must remain humble. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try our best. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. Wait, I can't actually talk to Pippa about the charging thing? Huh. That would explain why I couldn't find it in quests, or in fact anywhere. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Odd. Pretty sure that was the person. Hmm. Anyway, let's go meet Edgar Swansea up in their office. I believe they're on floor two, right? I remember I knocked on the door once. I think it's right here. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? 
In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. I'm a dead man. I was murdered. Now I'm a murderer. Tell me how this is a gift. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. Thank you. But I'd rather you didn't speak so lightly about my condition. There is nothing I find amusing about this situation. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Yeah, I thought at first once he was going to ask me to use my vampire powers to, like, teleport in and steal some mail. You know, get rid of some evidence or something. Doesn't sound quite that bad yet, but we don't really know what we're getting ourselves into until we go speak with them. Okay, uh, we still need to bring back Milton Brooks' wallet. Let's go speak with them. I have some good news, Milton. What? The epidemic's over? I retrieved your wallet. With all the money and a certain picture. Well, yeah, Pippa Hawkins is my girl. So what? Is it the difference of skin color that bothers you? Not at all, Milton. Good. Please, take this money anyway. To remind you to keep your mouth shut. Not everybody's as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Thanks? Let's see if there's any new questions that have opened up. What's going on between you and Nurse Hawkins? So aggressive. I'm tired. Tired of all this shit. Tired of all those corpses piling up. She's as depressed as I am. During the war, I witnessed a few couples just like you come together in difficult circumstances. It can be very damaging. Maybe you're right. But we support each other. And that's all that matters. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? There are a lot of secrets around here. I'm not surprised someone tried to make money from them. What kind of secrets? I'm not in the gossip business, Dr. Reed. If you want to know more, you better talk to Harriet Jones. She's the oldest patient here. Harriet Jones, okay. Goodbye, Milton. Let's go see Hawkins again, too. Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes, 
Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke. But we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Right, so unfortunately we can't look up the oldest patient by their name because we haven't really spoken with most of the patients, so they all just show up as unknown. I guess we'll just try speaking to some people. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. It's rather ironic, because I'm actually not mortal. 99.9% .9 of people you say that to, it'd be true. I wonder if they're actually a vampire. Probably not. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howcroft? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you. To care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them. For you are no match for those that hunt me. Wrong target. New investigation. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. It was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Have you heard of any blackmailing going on within these walls? I have no time for mortal games. My secrets are beyond their comprehension, Dr. Reed. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Who's that? They're inside. That might be them. They, they look pretty old. Harriet. It's locked. Damn it. I guess we just have to wait till something happens. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, sir, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. 
Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. What do you, what do you do for a living? Uh, they're a priest? Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really, but I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke? Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. I cannot enter. So for side quests, uh, we still need to interrogate two people, especially Tippets, about the what seems to be malpractice, killing accidentally or through malice, perhaps, a patient. And we also need to find out who is spying on Thelma. I can't find either Brannigan or Tippets, though, for some reason, using my special vampire vision. Oh, you know what? Oh, I know why. It's because I haven't spoken with them yet. At least, I definitely haven't spoken with Corcoran Tippets. So th it's one of these people that just show up as unknown. Okay. Well, that explains some things, but uh, while we're out here, why don't we go speak with that Lady Ashbury? The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfields, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, 
if you prefer, has been compromised. Uh, well, time's of the essence. I probably shouldn't just ask about random stuff, so let's just get to it. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? You are aware that I too know the thirst for the Scarlet Nectar. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Why do I feel like they're gonna end up dying before I get any real answers out of them? Isn't that usually how it goes? Delayed answers, I'll tell you, we just need to deal with this first, and then you go deal with it, and then they're dead. Ah, there we go. So we just needed to do that to open up Harriet. What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? <laughs> Can't you say shut up? <sighs> Dr. Swansea is quite busy, and I need you to help me get acclimated. I have many questions. <laughs> How brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. Do you know something about tippets? I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. 
You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. Have they? Have they given me anything to go on? I need to speak with Pippa, Dorothy, and Gwyneth. About what exactly? Whether they've been cavorting on hospital hours? What? Oh, I just need to speak with them to try to identify the blackmailer. So I guess they're all possible suspects? I don't really get the connection between that conversation and investigating them. I'm not seeing the A to B connection there. But I'll take it. Royal Garden Theater. Clyde Fitch presents Doris Fletcher. Sappho. Sounds good. Small bag of junk, oh yeah. The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. You are going to reveal all your secrets to me. Even the darkest thoughts in your heart. My blood and soul. They belong to you now. The life running in your veins. This dead flesh needs it. Oh, please spare me, Dark Queen. Spare your obedient slave. <laughs> a little bit of roleplay. Alright, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. As we watch... Who are you? Oh, that's Corcoran Tippets. I need to speak with you. Yeah, I was just watching them walk endlessly into the wood. Anyway, I think it's a pretty good place to end it. Um, I am... I find it interesting how much talking there is in this game. Um, I don't know if there's going to be... Uh, you know, I don't know if it'll be more combat-focused at some point, but uh, it definitely seems like Donut is trying to play to their strengths. Even though it is a bit of an action-adventure, they seem to be leaning pretty heavily on the adventure parts. I mean, there's a lot of people to talk to, there are long conversations. I just spent like an entire 30-plus minute episode doing quests that were just talking to people in and around the hospital. So they're definitely leaning hard on the uh, story and character aspects, which I'm totally okay with. I mean, I, I love it. All right, I'll be back soon.